This is the case of Zara Claire Baker. She was born on November 16, in 1999. Zara is from Wagga Wagga, South Wales, Australia. Her parents are Emily Dietrich and Adam Baker. Emily Dietrich, who had postpartum depression after Zara's birth, gave up custody to Adam. Adam took Zara and moved with his parents to Jeru, Queensland in 2004 to work for a sugar mill. Zara, who was diagnosed with bone cancer in 2005, later developed lung cancer as well. As a result, she had the lower part of one leg amputated and had to wear hearing aids. Later on, Adam Baker met Elisa Fairchild online on an IMVU website, which is an online virtual world and social networking site, founded in 2004. Elisa Fairchild visited Adam Baker in Queensland and they were soon married. Elisa had been previously married six times and was still married at the time she married Adam Baker. A few years go by and Zara's cancer went into remission in 2008, shortly before she moved to the United States from Australia with her father and new stepmother. After moving to North Carolina, the Bakers settled in Hickory where Zara attended public school until she was removed to start homeschooling. It is not known, though, if she was ever actually homeschooled. It is suspected Zara was taken out of public school because reports of child abuse were made to the school, implicating Elisa. Many neighbors of Zara's claimed that Elisa was physically and mentally abusive and neglected the child. Two teachers visited Zara's home after Zara came to school with a black eye in a public school in Hudson while she was in the fourth grade. Child Protective Services from both Caldwell and Catawba counties visited the various residences of Zara multiple times. Reports of Elisa's abusive behavior were investigated by the Department of Social Services in regards to her own biological children dating as far back as 1999. She has a daughter from a previous boyfriend and a son and a daughter from a previous marriage. I have confirmed that missing 10-year-old Zara Baker is dead. They identified a bone as hers. It was found about five miles away from other remains. Her father and stepmother are prime suspects in that case, ABC's. Elisa made a 911 call at 5.30 a.m. on October 9, 2010, to report a fire in the back of the family residence in Hickory. The police arrived to find a ransom note and the smell of gasoline coming from Adam's company truck, a Chevrolet Tahoe. In a second 911 phone call made to report Zara missing at 2 p.m. the same day, Adam Baker explained that during a fire in their backyard, a $1 million ransom note was found on his company truck the night before, addressed to Adam's boss and landlord, Mark Coffey. Adam explained that they called 911 earlier that day about the fire and implied that whoever started the fire may have done so to distract the family in order to take Zara. Adam explained the purported kidnapper mistakenly confused Zara for Mark Coffey's daughter. Coffey's daughter was unharmed and with her family, Adam stated. Adam said the last time he saw his daughter was at 2.30 a.m. Apparently, Adam Baker left for work early in the morning and did not return until after Zara went to sleep. Elisa failed a polygraph test she had taken early in the investigation. She was asked if she had hurt Zara, if she knew of anyone who had harmed Zara, and if she knew who wrote the ransom note. On October 10, 2010, search and rescue dogs were sent to search the baker's house and cars. The dogs gave positive alerts to the scent of human remains on both of the baker's cars, the Chevrolet Tahoe and a Satan. The police took swabs of what they thought might be blood from the car. Elisa Baker was also arrested for various crimes unrelated to the death of Zara, including communicating threats, writing bad checks, larceny, and driving with a revoked license. Baker, who was jailed, was next charged with obstruction of justice after admitting that she wrote the ransom note, which led the police astray. The search for Zara Baker is over. Investigators are devastated that we're not able to find Zara alive and bring her home safely. Investigators found human remains which match the missing 10-year-old in a wooded area outside her hometown. 
Zara's father and stepmother reported her missing on October 9th, but police say no one outside the family had seen her after September 25th. Elisa Baker's aunt, Bonzetta Winkler, told reporters that, according to Elisa, Zara died after being sick for two weeks and Elisa and Adam dismembered her and hid the remains. Alyssa's aunt said she'd been sick two weeks before she died. When they found her, I guess they didn't know what to do. They just went wild. However, Elisa reportedly said Adam dismembered Zara Baker alone after she died, and they both hid her remains. Elisa also told police that Zara died on September 24th but was not reported missing until October 9th. Allegedly, crime memorabilia dealer and owner of Serial Killers, Inc. Eric Keen, used an assumed name to write to Elisa in jail. She twice wrote back to him, sharing some information. According to a letter written to Eric Gain, Elisa admitted, we really didn't kill her, but what he did after the fact is kinda horrifying. It makes me scared of him. Elisa reportedly told her attorney Lisa Doves that Zara's prosthetic leg was left in a dumpster that she and Adam had disposed of at Fox Ridge Apartments in Hickory. Dubs informed police of the possible evidence. A prosthetic leg was found in late October off a road in Caldwell County, a few miles from a former residence of Elisa's. The Hickory Police Department were able to match the serial number of the prosthetic leg from Zara's medical records they obtained from Australia in order to confirm that it was definitely Zara's leg. In November 2010, Elisa Baker started leading police to different areas in Catawba and Caldwell counties to find Zara's scattered remains. Numerous bones of Zara were found, but Zara's head was not found until some years later. Elisa allegedly told police she had thrown Zara's mattress in a dumpster and police confirmed the mattress fitting the description was found in a landfill. Elisa Baker led the police to another dumpster behind a grocery store in Hudson where she and Adam dumped a car cover and bed cover, which was used to hide and transport Zara. Elisa also told police they would find Zara's body parts in the drain trap of the bathtub and that plastic gloves that she used would be found in her bathroom. A review of Elisa Baker's now-defunct MySpace page revealed she called herself Gothic Fairy 6668. Her page portrayed skulls and bones as Living Dead Girl by Rob Zombie was played. She listed Never, Neverland as her hometown, Queensland, Australia, as her state and country, and wrote that she was a college graduate and a proud parent. The page had photos of Zara on it, and in one photo, Zara was wearing all black and the title read The Dark Child. Lol. Her mood on the page was listed as crazy on the last day she signed in, October 8, 2010, one day before Zara was reported missing. Reportedly, Elisa Baker was married seven times. At times, she was married to two or three men concurrently, having failed to divorce before remarrying. Prior to marrying Adam Baker, Elisa had married three men within three years. In January 2011, it was reported that Elisa Baker was charged with bigamy after it was confirmed that she was still married to Aaron Young when she wed Adam Baker. Elisa had introduced Aaron Young to Adam as her brother. Elisa kept in frequent contact with Aaron Young, and they both visited an IMVU.com website on September 22, two days before the day Elisa later claimed Zara died. The IMVU website featured Chainsaw Massacre Role Playing. Police investigated the claim of a woman who used the same social networking site as the Bakers that she had had a conversation with one or both of the Bakers about doing a murder with chainsaws. Accusations against two men related to Elisa Baker's previous husband, Aaron Young, alleged that Zara was raped and may have been hit on the head, causing her death. The two cousins, James Young and Timothy Sammy Young, were both investigated by the police for the allegations. Both men passed polygraph tests and were not charged. Sammy Young was alleged to have had a sexual relationship with Elisa and the two had taken illicit drugs together.
There are still many outstanding questions in this case. Police have yet to say how Zara may have died. You understand the, what you're charged with? Zara's stepmother is a person of interest in her disappearance after she admitted to writing a fake $1 million ransom note. After her arrest, Zara's father said little to defend his wife. Do you think that your wife was anyway involved in your daughter's disappearance? I'm not sure. I'd like to think no. Neighbors in the area where searchers found her remains have come to pray for the young cancer survivor who lost her leg and her hearing battling the disease. I just cannot believe somebody would do this, and especially to a child who had lived through what she's lived through. For Good Morning America, Yanji Denise, ABC News, Atlanta. Since no cause of death could be determined, Zara's death was ruled an undetermined violent homicide. Elisa Baker allegedly told police that both she and Adam Baker had disposed of Zara's remains. But according to cell phone towers, only Elisa, not Adam, was in the area where Zara's remains were found. Investigators believe Elisa Baker killed and dismembered Zara on September 24, 2010, and disposed of her remains the following day. Elisa Baker was indicted by a grand jury for second-degree murder with aggravating circumstances on February 22, 2011, in Catawba County. The five aggravating circumstances were cited as Elisa Baker had a history of physical, verbal, and psychological abuse of the child. She secreted the child from her family before and after the crime. She desecrated Zara's body to hinder the murder investigation and prosecution. Zara was young and physically disabled. Elisa Baker took advantage of a position of trust. Elisa would have been charged with first-degree murder had she not led law enforcement to Zara's remains. Adam Baker has denied any involvement in Zara's death and police found no credible evidence to suggest that he had any involvement in her death. Elisa Baker's bond was increased by $200,000 due to the murder charge, making the total bond $307,700. In April 2011, Adam Baker was charged with identity theft and obtaining property under false pretenses. It was claimed that Adam Baker had used the identity of a man named James Starbuck and his social security number to get power connected to his apartment. James Starbuck is the husband of Elisa's daughter, Brittany Starbuck. Adam Baker was previously charged with passing worthless checks, communicating threats, assault with a deadly weapon and failure to return property. With these new charges, Adam was ordered not to leave North Carolina without notifying the district attorney's office. He also was ordered to wear an electronic monitoring device on his ankle and was ordered to meet with U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement once a week. He had been hoping to return to Australia. Elisa Baker was also charged with identity theft and obtaining property under false pretenses in February 2011. It was reported that Elisa had used her daughter, Brittany Starbucks' personal information to obtain telephone and utility service at one of the family residences in Caldwell County in March 2010. She pleaded not guilty to the four counts of identity theft in May 2011. In May 2011, Elisa Baker was indicted with seven drug counts for the time period of May 2006 through October 2010. Elisa, who had used different addresses in both Catawba and Caldwell counties, had distributed oxycodone, hydrocodone, and alprazolam, all prescription drugs for pain and anxiety. She was charged with possessing, distributing, and conspiring to distribute prescription drugs. These new federal drug charges combined with the previous unrelated charges brings the total to over 20. On June 2, 2011, Elisa pleaded not guilty to all seven federal drug charges. She is facing up to 20 years in prison for each drug charge. On March 4, 2013, U.S. District Court Judge Richard Voorhees sentenced Elisa Baker to serve 120 months in prison for conspiracy with intent to distribute prescription drugs.